my dad checking in on me. Um, he's doing awesome, by the way. Oh, man. That is so gross, guys. Guess I don't want to eat lunch today. And I have very little water to clean this, which is horrible. So I'm going to have to use, I'm going to not use that same rag that I've been using. I'll use this new other one that's down here. And they're from the Dollar Tree anyway. So it's not like it's a big uh, loss if they're permanently stained with this gross. But I will get, I will try to attempt to clean all this stuff later on. Um, like I say, once I start catching more rainwater again. <laughs> we're kind of past the point where we're going to have many night freezes, which is good. So that's the main thing. And I can catch some of this uh, rainwater going into April. April showers, right? Brings me flowers, guys. Something like that. So there we go. Fairly clean, decent. Um, compared to what it was So let's go ahead and continue the Reinstall for the first flush setup Okay, so you guys see that now What happens is The ball goes in now I always get this wrong the ball goes in that's right. So the ball goes in first. So let's go ahead and do that. Ball inside of here. And then you can crank this back on. And the purpose of the ball, guys, is when this compartment fills up with water, the ball goes to the very top. And what happens is it kind of dams off the water flow up there. And from there, um, it starts storing water. Okay, so the orifice is in. Filter's going up. Okay, the orifice is going in. And we just tie this up, thread this up in there. And we're all set for the spring, summer, fall season. And I am all set for winter now because I have my awesome new drain set up down here. It cost me a pretty penny, $40. So I was able to scrounge the packs, thank God. Not the same color, but I am, beggars can't be choosers at this point. So this is all set. Had a little bit of surprise water going on, which uh, this rag is definitely going to need some deep cleaning, uh, along with the rest of the stuff in the sink up there, because <laughs> that is absolutely friggin' gross. But uh, I think we're good. So now what I can do, guys, put the composting toilet back in. Um, I'm basically all set up properly um, to go from here. Now, one thing I gotta still do is go to the outside and kind of offset that pipe that goes through the wall and also silicone the hell out of the pipe, um, which will be kind of important because I don't need water coming in onto the floor into the tiny house. So I'll use that 35 year silicone stuff, which is always awesome, treated me well. And, uh, that will be it for today. See you guys on the next one. Alrighty guys, Rob from the Off Grid Tiny House. Um, what I did was I mounted a PWM charge controller, this black guy up here. Um, and it's just hanging on by two screws there. And what I need to do, because, let me zoom in a bit. There's, that's better. My MPPT, I love it, except um, it's not that smart. I, it continues to draw loads 
uh, and power all my stuff down here, um, which is not a good thing uh, when I don't want it to. So, why am I putting this in? Basically, to control my loads, my load center. So, right here is the load center on the MPPT. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wires, shove them into the load center on the PWM, and then take two wires from the battery terminals on the PWM and run those into the load center of the MPPT. So, when the... Uh, it's basically I'm adding something in series and in a series circuit on this so when the load center comes on it'll power this guy up and I will preset this to shut my load centers off when the battery hits a certain voltage up here because I can't do it here um, and because they're it's on a preset so the only way to get past the preset on the MPPT is go into the customs menu and do all that, but I'm just going to avoid that and use one of these PWMs that I have kicking around. And I'm going to run that in here, and this will control my load center, thus saving the battery um, from any further damage. Now, um, now that I got the electric heater mats off, uh, except for one, I got one under the powered by the wind turbine. I need to add another one just to uh, because we're in the windy season in the spring, and I need to dump power. So I'm gonna get to doing this stuff, and I'll get back to you once it's all set and done. Alrighty, guys. So I got everything wired in, as you can see there. Um, with whatever scrap wire I had. So I'm going to turn on the power on the load center of the MPPT now. And there we go. I can actually turn these on, my lights and everything back on. So now what I have to do is I have to program the PWM, which is this black guy up here. And I have to program it so when... Um, Uh, the loads This button sticking god damn it Hey The buttons literally stuck Let me shut this off for a second so I can see the screen Okay PV off Load off. Here we go. This is the one I, the screen I want to go into. Okay, load off at 12 2 or 12 3 even is good. Load on 24 7. Yeah. Now. I gotta get to load on screen again. Um, and I'm gonna change this. To like 13 volts or something. Sounds good to me. Okay, load off at 12.3 volts. And load on at 13. Back again. So that is now set. Now I'm going to probably have to lift you guys up to see that. And so what it's doing is it's no solar is going into that controller, but I'm using it in line as a, con a switch, basically a, con a smart switch, which will, I can turn this back on now, maybe. It's, it's hard to read with that light on there. That's better. So this guy will then shut all my equipment down, which is down here. Let me show you. All my stuff charging. Um, it will shut that stuff off at when this hits 12.2, thus saving the battery. And when it does do that, it will not come back on again until 
the loads will not come back on again when until it hits 13 volts which is kind of a lot better so now that that's all being controlled I can literally leave lights and stuff on in here and it will automatically shut them off when the battery hits 12 2 which is not too shabby if you ask me but you know whatever so that's another success um, I spent more time looking for my side cutters than I did actually working because I needed them to strip the wires. Now, I need to buy a pair of wire, proper wire strippers so I don't have to do this. Um, it's just nonsense. But anyways, I still got to go outside and I'm going to go mess around with the, that drain hose out there. And I need to pick up some silicone and just glob it on there so I don't have any leakage going on. Now, Tiny House is a complete mess. And I'm not even going to show you the nightmare behind here, but a lot's going on. So, um, that's it for this video. And I'm going to go outside and mess around out there with that tubing like I said, and I will be back to you guys in a later video. Talk to you later.